it. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started here. Karen and Kirby, it's nice to meet you all. I don't know if anybody else is going to be joining us, but we'll leave the virtual door open for them um, as we roll along here. So feel free to unmute. We'll uh, we'll kind of hang out here for a second. It looks like there's a couple other people joining. So. Do the camera too. Can we do that? Hi, Tyler. We go back to Augusta. We do. How are you, Karen? Doing well. How about yourself? Good. Thanks for doing this, Lynn. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think this might be everybody. It doesn't appear that anybody else is, is loading or logging in here, so. Um. Hi, Tyler. I thought I'd say hello. I'm dialing in from near Manchester in England. Oh. It's eight o'clock at night here. Oh. Very dark. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> well, like I said, if everybody wants to turn their cameras on and, and turn their mics on, we'll try to treat this as much like a in-person workshop as possible. I always like for folks to introduce themselves and uh, get to know each other. That's one of the great things about uh, playing traditional music is you get the chance to connect with so many other wonderful people. So um, oh, we still got a couple more folks coming in. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, introduce myself as these uh, folks are getting loaded up here in the Zoom. My name is Tyler Hughes. I live in uh, Big Stone Gap, Virginia, which is over in the far southwestern corner of Virginia. I'm real close, uh, probably about 30 minutes away from the Tennessee border and about 30 minutes away from the Kentucky border. So way down in the corner of Virginia. And I've been playing banjo since I was about 12, so uh, for a little bit now. And I didn't really grow up with old time music in my family, but it was around in the community in the uh, greater region where I lived. So um, I became interested in it as a teenager and attended a local music camp there. And um, that's how I really got started playing banjo, was uh, listening to folks like Emily Spencer from the White Top Mountain Band and uh, a lot of regional folks from across Southwest Virginia. And yeah, I went on after high school, uh, attended East Tennessee State University where I got a bachelor's degree in bluegrass old time and country music studies. So, and I try to be a full-time musician. Of course, this is a wild time to be a full-time musician. So I currently work part-time uh, for the State Park Service in Virginia too. So I still have a cool a cool day job as it is. And then get to moonlight as a banjo player and banjo teacher as well. So, um, well, we've got a couple of folks here who maybe are just going to listen. They haven't turned their cameras on um, and that's okay. This is going to be a banjo workshop, so I invite you, if you've got a banjo uh, nearby, like Karen does, uh, pick it up and I want you to play along. We'll do this uh, in a similar fashion that other Zoom workshops and Zoom classes have, have been using, and I think it's worked fairly well. I use it for a ukulele class that I'm teaching right now at the community college, and that um, we'll kind of uh, break things down into small bits and we'll play together you all will be muted, but you'll be able to hear me and be able to play along with me. And then if we need to, we can unmute and, and speak out if you if something is confusing or not quite right and, and so on. So uh, don't, feel, don't feel afraid to speak up. I know uh, it's a wild, wild new world we're living in on Zoom. So I don't know that anybody has all the answers for the correct um, 
manners <laughs> that you should use on Zoom. So, um, but we'll go ahead and get started here. I, I've picked out three or four pieces. I don't know that we'll get to them all, uh, but the first one that we're gonna play. Oh, I love this. Okay, <laughs> we've got uh, the chat going too. So great. So the first piece that we're going to play, it comes from Scott County, Virginia. It comes from a banjo player named uh, Scott Boatrot. Scott Boatrot worked um, for the Forest Service for a long time. He was uh, stayed out in the um, watchtowers or fire towers in the in the Southwest Virginia region. And Scott was a pretty influential banjo player around. He had a family band. Um, his sisters and brothers played music but they unfortunately never got to record. Uh, they were invited to record in the early 20s, the same as uh, the Powers family and, and uh, other local groups like uh, the Magic City Trio and Doc Boggs. And when they got to the hotel where they were supposed to record, the family got in a big argument and <laughs> decided that they weren't gonna record together that day. So they missed their chance uh, to make history. But, uh, Scott kept playing banjo and he was recorded by several folklorists later on in life too. So that's where this first tune comes from. It's a version of a G tune just in standard G called Davenport. Um, Scott was very good friends with Doc Boggs. They didn't live that far apart from each other. Scott lived on Copper Creek in Scott County and Doc Boggs of course lived outside of uh, Norton, Virginia, just up the road from where I live. So they did play a lot of music together. And if you go and listen to Doc Boggs' uh, early recordings, he has a version of Davenport, of course, in his own uh, three-finger blues style of banjo playing, but the melody is very similar. So it is my belief that they probably played this tune together or could have swapped this tune back and forth between each other. But I'll play through it all the way, and then we'll kind of break it down. Um, it's pretty standard in that it's a A part twice, B part twice tune. So familiar to the, to the patterns of a lot of old time and traditional uh, banjo pieces. It's a fairly straightforward melody and uh, also it's very similar to another really well-known tune that comes from Southwest Virginia, Last Chance, uh, which has its own kind of special tuning. Yeah, from uh, banjo player Herbert Smith up around uh, the Saltville area, which is a couple hours east of here. But um, it's a very similar melody, even though it's in a different key. Um, so I think it kind of shows that relation that even though throughout Southwest Virginia, which has some very distinct uh, kind of micro regions within it, there's still a lot of connecting forces through the art and the culture that's lived here. So, and I always think about that when I, when I hear this tune or when I play this tune, but. Uh, so we'll dive right into this one and kind of break it down uh, line for line. And like I said, if you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to unmute and speak up or, or type in the chat. I'll try to keep an eye on that as well as we go along here. So we're gonna start, like I said, we're in standard G tuning. And we're gonna start up on the first string, fifth fret. Um, the thing I'll point out first is that there's no sort of special right hand techniques in this tune. It's just all straightforward uh, bum ditties, if that's what you like to call the, the right hand movement. So you don't have any drop thumb or anything like that going on in this tune. So, uh, but we're starting on our first string fifth fret and that first line is gonna sound like this. <laughs> So I'm reaching back to the second fret, fifth fret, and then open. So one more time, those first two lines will sound like. Okay. 
and we'll try that together. You all play along uh, with me, of course, uh, but you'll stay muted, of course, just as a reminder. So I'll count us off. Uh, I'll count one, two, ready, go, and we'll try to play it together here. So we'll do one, two, ready, go, and... We'll move on to the second line. And like I said, unless anybody uh, speaks up, we'll just keep trucking here. We're gonna move up to the first string, seventh fret. And here I, I grab this note with my index finger. Um, I know everybody's hands are uh, have different abilities and different ages and so on. And so whatever is most comfortable for you is what you should do because you don't want to get hurt playing music. But um, I always point out which fingers I'm using because I feel like Sometimes those are the fingers that'll lead you to an easier, um, easier transition between notes or chords. So starting on the first string seventh fret, we have a very similar um, line as the first line. When I get to that fifth fret, I'm pulling off on the first string fifth fret and then hitting an open second string. So again, that second line is. So let's try those first two lines together. I'll uh, kind of call out frets here and there as we go along. So I'll count us off again. We'll go one, two, ready, go, and. Seventh fret, pull off second string. Mm -hmm. Our third line is going to be uh, identical to our first line. If you've played much traditional music um, and not just old time music or bluegrass music, any type of uh, traditional music, especially from uh, North America, you'll find that it's very, very common. A very common pattern is that the third phrase of your music quite often mimics, if not exactly repeats, the first phrase of the music you're playing. And so that's happening here too. So we just have that same line. So we'll put all three together. Um, I'll count us off. We'll go one, two, ready, go. Last phrase here, the fourth line of the A part, we're jumping to the third string, second fret, and we're doing sort of a, a double pull off here, or a one pull off and then noting the second fret and then open third string. So you've got. So it's. fourth string second fret and then hammering on the fourth string second fret. So let's just try that fourth line together. So starting on the third string second fret we'll go ready go and pull off to open hammer third string. So we don't have any bum ditties or strums in there until we get to that fourth string second fret when we're hammering on there so one more time we'll try the fourth line and then we'll put it all together so starting on the third string second fret we'll go one two ready go and so let's try to put the whole tune together or the whole a part of the tune together Starting on the first string, fifth fret. I said, uh, just to remind you, this is called Davenport. And we're just doing the A part. We're gonna do it one time through. And then if everybody feels comfortable with that, we'll do it two times through, just like it's the, the real thing here. So starting on the first string, fifth fret, we'll go one, two, ready, go, and. <laughs> Thank you.
everybody feel good about that? Thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the middle somewhere. <laughs> That's okay. We'll try it again. This time we'll do the A part two times through. And you'll get lots of practice. If you feel uh, just a little stressed about that fourth phrase in the A part, you'll get lots of practice on that in the B part. So um, we're going to start on the first string, fifth fret, and we're going to play the entire A part. So playing that last section two times through. So one, two, ready, go. And Okay, uh, I was going to say that oh. fourth line. Could we do it in two bits, please? It's too too much for me to take in it all at once. Could we do it in two bits, please? Yes, the you mean uh, just separating, doing one A part and then a second A part. No, that fourth line. We did it all together. Can oh. we do it in two two sections, please? Yes, yeah, splitting up that fourth right. phrase. So uh, let's find a good place to split it. Let's split it right after that open third string. So the first, first half of the fourth phrase, we're doing a pull off on the third string second fret, and then noting the third string second fret. Right, and then we're going to the fourth string second fret, a single note there, then we're gonna hammer onto that second fret and that's followed by a full bum ditty. So you're gonna add a strum there. Back to the third string. So when we put that together. Does that make a little more sense that way? Okay. I was gonna say too, um, if anybody wants to, some of you I've, I've met before and I've got your contact information or you've got mine, but um, any of the tunes that we do today or any of the stuff that we go over, I'll be glad to send you like a, a short YouTube recap. That's something that I always do for my uh, private lesson students uh, that are online. So if you wanna reach out, there's various ways to do that. You can connect on Facebook or um, I think Emily's thrown my website up in the chat here. You can contact me through there, go through that website and send me an email. And I'd be glad to uh, send you a recap or explain things in, in greater detail too, um, if there's anything after the workshop you wanna look at, so. So our B part to Davenport, like I said, you're going to get a lot of practice on that fourth phrase because the B part is all built around that final phrase of the A part. For our B part, I'll play through the B part one time so you can kind of hear what we're doing. So it's just a pattern of going back and forth between those notes on the third string and then grabbing the first string second fret and an open first string and then going back to that original phrase from the A part. So you're going to start the same way we did that uh, fourth phrase of the A part. But we're going to add a strum there on the end of that open third string. So you've got pull off to open, then that repeats. And we're dropping to the first string, second fret, and then open. 
So you have... So let's try that together after you play through that. Just that first line. We're starting on the third string, second fret. We'll go one, two, ready, go. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the next phrase is just a repeat of that fourth section of the A part. So just try that one more time. Now we're gonna put those two sections together. So starting on your third string, second fret, we'll go ready, go, and. And that's really our whole B part. Of course, you're gonna play that a few more times until you uh, round out the tune. Um, so one whole time through the B part with those two sections will sound like this. that a shot we'll, we'll put it on repeat um, so we're gonna play through it two full times here to make up uh, one whole B part of Davenport so starting on the third string second fret I'll count us off here we'll go one two ready go and put that with our A part we have the whole tune of Davenport so let's go back we'll try it one time all the way through and if nobody has any pressing questions we'll move on to another tune I want us to get a couple of uh, at least sections of different tunes going on here because uh, we've just got an hour before we move on to the next workshop um, but like I said if you have any questions regarding anything specific, make note of it and please send me an email or contact me on Facebook. I'd be glad to send you a video or we can get on a, a Zoom call some other time down the road and we'll explain it better too. So let's try the whole tune though. We're starting on our first string, fifth fret. I'm going to count us off. I'll call out some of the frets as we move along, try to keep everybody on the, on the same pace here. So one, two, ready, go. Seventh fret, second string, third string, A part again.
everybody feeling good? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Either way. <laughs> like I said, you can always holler at me holler at me afterwards too. So um, if there's something that sticks out in a tune. Uh, let's retune here if everybody's comfortable with it. We'll go to the key of C, so uh, double C, um, or what some folks call Sawmill tuning. Sorry, this chat box is uh, distracting, and I, I thought that I almost cut off my <laughs> Zoom call, but thankfully I didn't. So, <laughs> thanks, Martha. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're tuning in. I wish I could see you in person. It's been over a year since I've seen uh, seen you, which is so hard to believe. But. So we're going to double C now. And I'm going to play a tune or teach you a tune from Dr. Ralph Stanley. Um, I don't live too far from where uh, the good doctor was born and raised and um, of course, uh, when I was a teenager in high school, he he lived in the neighboring county over, uh, which has even less amenities than we have in Wise County. So a lot of times you would see Dr. Ralph Stanley eating. He loved to come over to the steakhouse in Wise County and eat. So you'd see him there a lot. But my favorite thing to always tell is that Ralph's wife loved to shop at Parks Belk or or what people call Belk today, just clothing store like Dillard's or JCPenney, you know, and uh, Ralph evidently wasn't much of a shopper because every time you'd go in there, if they were in there together, Ralph would be sitting in one of the big tall chairs at the makeup counter, just kind of watching everything go on, and then his wife would like be pushing around a massive cart of clothing and household items, so those were my experiences with Dr. Ralph Stanley. <laughs> But I'm going to play a tune here. I always like to, to teach his tunes and Scott's tunes um, because both of them had a lot of influence from uh, female musicians in their life, particularly their mother. Uh, Scott was also taught by a family friend, if I recall right. They uh, kind of run sort of like a boarding house out of their house at times, and this uh, family friend come and stayed with them, and she uh, played fiddle and taught Scott uh, much of what his early knowledge was about old time music and old time fiddle tunes. But uh, Ralph was uh, especially influenced by his mother, Lucy Stanley Smith. She was a claw hammer banjo player uh, around Dickinson County. And she was known for playing dances and uh, playing lots of tunes. And he did a couple of albums that were dedicated to his mom and the banjo knowledge that she passed on. Um, Ralph's Clawhammer banjo playing, of course, is uh, a little bit different style than many of the other styles of Clawhammer banjo playing that exist throughout the Southwest Virginia region. But I think that's what makes it so great is that it is it is different from how everybody else sounds. He still loved to play on a big resonator banjo with like a, a frosted top and, and low action. So he kind of has this like really uh, loud and wild sound to his Clawhammer playing which you can't always get on uh, on banjos with fiber skin heads and stuff, but you can try. Um, but yeah, so he did a couple of albums dedicated to his mom and the tunes that she taught him. Um, one of them I think is called Songs My Mother Taught Me. And I believe that's where, no, this actually came off, this tune actually came off of his album called Old Time Pickin', which is a collection of claw hammer tunes that he recorded. Um, this one is called Battle Axe, and it's an interesting tune in that the, the A, what I would call the A and the B part, are distinct. They sound like their own tune. Like, I haven't heard this as any other part of another tune, at least nothing uh, common. But then the C part, I don't know if this is from where Ralph learned it, or perhaps it's just a common theme because he has other tunes that do this. Um, the C part is very, very similar to the melody of Black Eyed Susie, if you know that tune. So <laughs> um, 
it's a mixture, but it's a good tune. It's a really fun one. If you listen to the recording of this, you can access it on YouTube or Spotify. It travels about a thousand miles per hour. He always liked to play really, really fast when he played claw hammer tunes uh, at concerts and in recordings. We're not going to do it quite that fast because I think it makes a nicer, uh, slower paced tune as well. But I'll play through it a couple times here and then we'll break it down. So this is called Battle Axe uh, from Dr. Ralph Stanley. <laughs> So uh, this is another tune that has a really straightforward melody and a really straightforward right hand movement. If you ever listen to any interviews that Ralph Stanley ever gave, he always said, he never even said that he played claw hammer banjo. He said that he played Fralin style banjo. Um, you know, it's all in semantics, I guess, as to what you want to refer to your playing. But um, he said that he didn't play claw hammer, he played Fralin. And he always talked about how his mother never played any drop thumb styles and so he doesn't play any drop thumb style banjo playing so this is another one where the right hand is just straight ahead bum ditties um and like i said if you listen to his recordings of this it's going to sound really rhythm heavy and sometimes it's uh a little difficult to make out what the melody notes are but we tried to tried to piece them together here um as best i can for you and then after this if we've still got a few minutes i'll get you into something that's just a little bit more difficult um We'll actually do a little bit of finger picking here on the banjo to wrap up with after this tune. So we won't have everything just uh, just straight ahead bum ditty claw hammer tunes. But we're going to start. We're in double C here. So I always like to hold my C major chord with my my second finger on my first string second fret. Um, some people hold it with their index finger. That's fine. But I find if you're holding it with your Second finger, you can easily transition into your F chord or your G chord. And that's important in this tune because the B part, what I'm going to call the B part of this tune, is going to focus on playing right there in that F chord where your ring finger is going to switch over to the first string, third fret. So, but holding it on the first string, second fret, I'm using my index to kind of launch into this tune. I'm hammering on the third string, second fret, go into an open second string and then into the first string. So we have. So that's our first phrase. We'll just try that and then we're gonna add to it a little bit and then we'll do this first line together. So again, hammering on the third string. Once you get there, uh, you're gonna use your ring finger to reach out. This is uh, what I like about this tune. It has that really distinct melody line where it's, uh, going to the third string, first string, third fret. So we have. So that's three, two, open, pull off, second string. up our whole first line so let's try that together that whole first line starting on an open third string we're kind of walking down to our first string 
and across and back up. So starting on the open third string, we'll go one, two, ready, go. Again, we'll do that uh, starting on your third string. We'll go ready, go. Making sense to everybody? The second line is very similar, it starts the same way. same exact thing for our first two lines so let's try that and then we'll add on to the next section so we're going to play that through two times that first line that we played so ready go So, so, okay, let's try it one more time and then we'll uh, add on to it from there. So, starting again on our open third string, we'll go ready, go. And then repeat. better um like i said you can reach out afterwards i'll be glad to send you a, a more broken down youtube recap of this too so the next section we're going to be hammering on on our first string and we're going into an f chord shape so remember that's your third string second fret and first string first fret so uh it's going to sound like So I'm hammering on the first string second fret, and then I'm playing the first string third fret at F chord, playing that for four beats. So you have hammer, one, two, three, four. So let's try that. We're gonna start with a hammer on the second fret and then F chord for four beats. So ready, go. Let's try from the beginning of the tune up to right there. We'll just keep building up like building blocks. So starting on our C chord, starting on the open third string, we'll go ready, go. Here we're going to hammer back on to our C chord, so back onto your first string, second fret to that E note. So we just have a hammer, pull off, second string. So let's try from the beginning up through that, and then we have one more section to add on, and that'll get us through. Uh, what I call the A and the B part. Really, it could probably just be an A part, depending on how you like to count out your parts, but I consider this a three-part tune, so we'll keep it that way. Uh, <laughs> so starting from the beginning again, starting on an open third string, we'll go ready, go. And then our 
our tagline from here, not to keep moving too quickly, but our tagline from here is just a repeat from that earlier section of the song. So we've got... And that really makes up one full time uh, through this section. So let's try it together slowly. I'll count us off. We'll go one, two, ready, go. section is going to play through two times that'll get you through what I consider to be the A and the B part. Um, so let's try that doing it two times through and then we're going to add on uh, the next section or the Black Eyed Susie section uh, which isn't too terribly difficult but uh, we'll go over it just the same. So we're going to play this through two times now starting on our open third string. We'll go one, two, ready, go. So that makes up our A and our B part. Our C part is going to be the Black Eyed Susie section, which is going to start up on the first string, fifth fret. And it's a very kind of uh, skeleton melody of Black Eyed Susie. So if you're familiar with that tune, you'll find that this will probably fall out of your fingers pretty easily. So it's going to start on the first string, fifth fret, like. <laughs> We'll try not to get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's just go from, from walking down that first string uh, down to our C chord. So starting on the first string, fifth fret, we'll go ready, go, and... And then of course from there, uh, we're gonna have the pull off, so... So let's see if uh, we can do that together. We're starting to run short on time here. So we'll just try to play that section together. And uh, then if you have any specific questions about that melody of the second half, we'll do that. So it'll be starting on our first string, fifth fret. We're gonna go ready, go and... <laughs> The first section here, I've got a, a gnat in here that's driving me crazy. Uh, the first section and the second section are almost identical, except on the end of the line. On the second time, Ralph always goes back up to that high G note. So we have the same thing again. <laughs> He's going 
going up to that fifth fret. So I, I don't want to rush us. I know we've, uh, we're running short on time, but I want us to get through at least three separate things here. So let's try to play this whole tune. We'll keep it slow. And um, like I said, if, if you'll send me a message after this, I'd be glad to get you a more broken down uh, version of this on YouTube so you can follow along more. So we're going to try to play this whole tune though. This is called Battle Axe. We're starting on an open third string in our C chord position in double C tuning. So we'll go one, two, ready, go. So that's a battle axe. Like I said, I know that uh, last section there is not uh, completely clear, but we're running short on time. And I want to get us into one more thing uh, before we run out of time this afternoon. Also, before I forget, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And thanks uh, to Emily and all the folks at Ferrum uh, for putting this on. This has been really great. Um, I do hope we can have something in person eventually we're on our way i got my first dose of the covid vaccine yesterday so the first step is uh is been taken so hopefully soon we'll all be able to hang out in person again and play music but uh this is a great alternative so thanks for setting this up and thank you all for taking part but i'm gonna give you just kind of a little teaser on this last piece um uh, some Doc Boggs music. Like I said, I, I live in Big Stone Gap and Doc Boggs was from Norton, which is just about 15 minutes up the road. Um, 10 if you really drive fast. So I want to get you into just a little bit of his playing. He had a really, really unique style of playing the banjo. Uh, of course, Doc was a, a coal miner in the 20s and 30s and uh, lived just on the outskirts of Norton, uh, right as the coal camps kind of begin there. And I always like to teach some of his music, not only because it's unique, but because Doc was one of these performers who, um, for a really long time in his career, he was never, uh, never afraid or never ashamed to say that, uh, like, his greatest influence was always the African-American musicians who lived around the city of Norton. So uh, if you ever get a chance to read some of the interviews he did with Mike Seeger, uh, he tells some great stories about sneaking off uh, to the other side of the of the coal camps, which are, were, of course, segregated in that time period. And he would sneak in and, and listen uh, to the dances and the music, the African-American uh coal miners and musicians and folks in the community were playing and he also cited several other influences of um, some sort of blues guitarist African-American players that uh, stayed more in the main part of the city as well so I always like to teach some of his music and like I said it's just incredibly unique a lot of that deals with the tunings though um, Doc liked to tune his banjo in these crazy kind of minor tuning so that's where we're going to start we're going to try to copy just a little bit of his version of pretty poly so from our double c tuning you want to tune your fourth string back up to a d major <laughs> uh, 
Then we're going to tune our second string down to an A note. So going all the way down to A. And then your fifth string, you're going to take from a G to an F sharp. kind of gives you that haunting sound uh, that Doc used on a lot of different tunes and uh, it's similar to other tunings he used. If you want to keep messing around with this afterwards, uh, another great tune to explore is his version of the country blues which is in the same tuning except you'll drop your fourth string from a D to a C and that'll put you in the tuning that he used to play that. So there's nothing, uh, nothing about this tuning that would keep you from playing his tunes in a claw hammer um, style, like you could do that very easily. Um, but of course, he was known for his finger picking. Uh, like I said, he sort of, he's always said he kind of based that off of, off of the blues musicians that lived around Morton playing guitar. So I'll play through this just a little bit to give you the feel of it, and then. Uh, break it down just a tiny bit, show you some of the moves he's using, and then also show you that you can play this in a claw hammer version too. So, but this is his version of Pretty Polly. It sounds like this. <laughs> So the way that you can get that sound, you're going to be using similar to what a lot of bluegrass players call like a an alternate thumb roll. Uh, so you're using your thumb, your index, and your second finger here. One thing Doc would do just to kind of get you in the feel of using your, your fingers, which can often be a little awkward, is he sort of played a rhythm by doing pinches. So he's hitting the fourth string and then pulling up or pinching up on the first and second strings. And just like a bluegrass player, I always find it helps if you can kind of anchor your right hand to your drum with your either your pinky or your ring finger or both. That'll give you a little more stability. So. he's incorporating there I'll uh, say the string numbers it's going to be with your thumb third string <laughs> when I slow things down they <laughs> can't make any sense of them yeah it's going to be three two five one so just like an alternate thumb roll in bluegrass three two five one so that's a good way to practice getting into some of his tunes if you want to explore those is working between those pinches or that rhythm he's keeping and that roll. So a good exercise would be to pinch, pinch, pinch. course uh, you got to figure out that melody too on the left hand um, we're quickly running short of time though so I'll just say um, as well with your right hand a lot of what makes Doc's music unique and sometimes feel a little overwhelming is that he really didn't play by any rules because much like a Roscoe Holcomb uh, they had their own very distinct style of playing banjo Whereas today we kind of think of all of all of music is kind of set in these parameters, uh, but in the 20s and the 30s, and and long before that, most musicians didn't have all those kind of standardized ways that we learn instruments. So, 
one thing that I'll say about dogs music is like, don't be afraid to break up that rhythm and make it syncopated to get a certain note or, or whatever you have to do, because he was definitely doing that in a lot of his tunes. And like I said, you can still play a lot with this tuning with a claw hammer version. It works the same way. So if I play pretty poly with the finger picking, it sounds like, let's see. same effect uh at least tuning wise get you in those same tunings that doc boggs was using but of course like i said he was doing a lot of finger picking so does anybody have any questions about anything we covered i'm going to throw my email up here in the chat too so if you want to reach out via email uh if you want a specific video or talk about a tune that we went over um i'll be glad to send that to you and uh once again, want to say thank you all so much for tuning into this, and thanks to, to Emily and everybody who worked so hard on this. And I hope you all are staying tuned in. There's other great workshops coming on throughout the day. So uh, Trey Wellington, I think, is doing another banjo workshop, and then uh, Martha is going to be dancing at home. I reckon she's going to roll up the rug in the living room there and do a little dancing for you. So um, thanks again for, for thank you, Tyler. Yeah, thank you all. And if you have any questions, we still got just a, a minute or two here left. So, Thanks, Tyler. Um, yeah, thank you. We'll be in touch. All right, great. <laughs> like I said, you can uh, add me on Facebook too. I, I, I try to stay on there somewhat a little bit. <laughs> Facebook's a hard place to be sometimes, but I'll, uh, I'll at least answer your messages for sure. So, so check it out. Okay, thanks very much. All right. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Tyler. This has been wonderful. Oh, great. Great. I'm glad it worked out. Thanks for having me be part of it. Me too. Bye. Yeah.